Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Genesis chapter 19. We're going to be studying through this passage here. Um, I will give you a caveat warning here that we're going to be dealing with some adult themes uh, on this uh, in this chapter in the Bible. So uh, if you have little ones or ones that you uh, uh, may not want to have some of these conversations with, uh, you may want to either skip ahead of this or or review this before listening together. Um, this we will not be doing any gratuitous or anything like that, but uh, there's enough going on here that's uh, that's kind of rough stuff, and part of that is the the whole reason for this chapter, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah because of a lot of these things that are happening. Before we dive into this passage, let's first have a time of prayer. So, if you join me in prayer, dear Heavenly Father, we just ask for your wisdom this morning for us to be able to hear what you have to say to us, your warnings, as well as your, your promises, your, your faithfulness to the righteous, even in the midst of great judgment. Lord, help us to be righteous and not righteous enough, but Lord, help us to take heed to the warnings that we see here for those who were righteous but were not righteous enough. Lord God, we uh, we pray your blessings upon our reading of your word this morning. We pray these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. So Genesis chapter 19. Um, if you have not pre previously read through the book of Genesis, uh, some of these passages today are going to be a little bit shocking. What? It says that in the Bible? That's kind of crazy. But... Um, that is exactly what we're going to see today. Some we're going to see Sodom and Gomorrah completely out of control, but we're going to see righteous Lot saved from the midst of this. And we're going to see that even there, him, his wife, are not going to make the best choices. If you think that church is for all the people who have it all together, <laughs> that's not what we see laid out in scripture. The men and women of faith in the Bible made so many horrible mistakes that uh, that many of us can't even imagine making these type of mistakes. And yet here we are. This is righteous Lot. So the angels have visited uh, with Abraham, two angels, and the Lord. Now the two angels continue on while the Lord does not continue into Sodom and Gomorrah to see if the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is as great as has been made. Verse 19, verse 1. Uh, the two angels entered Sodom in the evening as Lot was sitting in Sodom's gateway. Now, that means he's kind of a judge because the, the gatehouse is kind of where the decisions would be made uh, in these olden times. It was kind of like the, the, the courthouse, so to speak. So the two angels are entering into Sodom and uh, Lot is sitting in the gatehouse. And we're going to see later that basically it's because nobody else wants to do any, you know, judgy work. <laughs> nobody else wants to judge anybody. Nobody wants to bring any kind of fairness or, or relief to anyone. So when Lot saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed with his face to the ground and said, My lords, turn aside to your servant's house, wash your feet, and spend the night. Then you can get up early and go on your way. No, they said, we would rather spend the night in the square. But Lot urged them so strongly that they followed him and went into his house. He prepared a feast and baked unleavened bread for them, and they ate. Now, this this sounds so far very reminiscent of uh, what Abraham does, right? Abraham is like, please, please, please come into my house. Um, let me show you hospitality. Let me cook you some food, give you some water, and then you can go where you need to go. But But, you know, come in. So Lot is also showing this hospitality to these strangers that he has never met. But we're also going to see that he has an ulterior motive uh, because they uh, they wanted to sleep in the square. And uh, he didn't tell them what would happen to them if they slept out in the square. But uh, we're going to find out. Uh, it says, 
Before they went to bed, the men of the city of Sodom, both young and old, the whole population surrounded the house. They called out to Lot and said, where are the men who came to you tonight? Send them out so that we can have with them. I got to still watch the uh, the words here. Um, so they want to, to do horrible things to them, right? They want to know them biblically and by force. This is a situation that is, I mean, this isn't just some of them. This isn't like the bad people of Sodom come out. All of them, all of the men, young and old, the whole population surrounded the house. And uh, when they're told no, we'll see how they respond here. Lot went out to them to the entrance and shut the door behind him. He said, don't do this evil, my brothers. And then... He tries to make it better, but listen. If you're a parent, listen to this and tell me if, if this sounds anywhere rational. Look, I have two daughters who haven't been intimate with a man. I'll bring them out to you and you can do whatever you want to them. However, don't do anything to these men because they have come under my roof for protection. What? Now, for those of you in the West, this, this understanding of protection and this understanding of guests uh, being protected under such extreme circumstances may not sound um, relatable. In the Middle East and such, they still have this idea where if you are somebody's guest, they will protect you with their life and their family's life. That is a point of honor. Now, in the West, we don't really have honor at all anymore, it seems like. Uh, you can hopefully get somebody's uh, integrity and such, but uh, um, the people that will do this type of laying down their family's lives and their own lives for the protection of their, their guests um, is, is much more rare than it should be. But the, the lengths that he will... That, where he goes with this is just evil. Evil. He's trying to stop an evil, but he, he recommends another evil. His own two daughters. Is he fearing for his life? Now we see a, a, a similar episode happen in the book of Judges, which... Part of the reason why it's in the book of Judges is to show that Israel has gotten to a place where they're as wicked as Sodom. That's kind of the point of the passage. They, they, they pick out this one episode. And they had done this same kind of thing. They all show up and uh, and instead of uh, giving in, they, they, they the man gives them uh, his daughter. Uh, I believe servant, sorry. And uh, and they then they kill her. So while Lot is trying to do the right thing here, you can still see that he's been warped and twisted. And we're gonna see that that's not the not the end of it either. Get out of the way, they said, adding, this one came here as an alien, speaking of Lot but he's acting like a judge. Now we'll do more harm to you than to them. See, it's not just perversion. It's not just twisted moral. They're extremely violent. And if you, and if you speak up against what, what they want to do, you're now the enemy. Has anyone seen any shadows of that in the West here recently? where if you even speak against their twistedness, they now will threaten violence against you. They put pressure on Lot and came to break down the door. But the angels reached out, brought Lot into the house with them, and shut the door. Then they, the angels, struck the men who were at the entrance of the house, both young and old, with blindness, so that they were unable to find the entrance. 
So the angels supernaturally bring judgment upon all of the men of the city, making them blind. Then the angel said to Lot, do you have anyone else here, son-in-law, your sons and daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of this place, for we are about to destroy this place because the outcry against the, its people is so great before the Lord that the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So, uh, 10 righteous? Apparently not. Apparently not. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law who are going to marry his daughters. Get up, he said. Get out of this place, for the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. When warnings of God's impending judgment are taken as a joke, because God certainly will never, ever, ever judge people like us because we're the good people. When the entire morality of the world has been turned upside down, the wicked think they're righteous. They are justified in their own eyes. And the idea that they are not pleasing to God, is, it just doesn't even enter into their head. Because they've built a, a, a morality around themselves and their perverse desires that that is where they go with it. At daybreak, the angels urged Lot on, get up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away in the punishment of the city. But he hesitated because the Lord's compassion for him. The men grabbed his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters, and they brought them out and left him outside the city. They dragged him out of the city. They dragged his wife out of the city. They dragged his daughters out of the city because they didn't want to leave. They didn't want to leave their comforts. They didn't want to leave the privilege, their riches, their wealth. They were not ready when it was time to leave. As soon as the angels got them outside, one of them said, of the angels, right? Run for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere on the plain. Run to the mountains or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, no, my lords, please. Your servant has indeed, if your servant has indeed found favor with you and you have shown me great kindness by saving my life, but I can't run to the mountains. The disaster will overtake me and I will die. Maybe we won't go fast enough. Look, this town is close enough for me to flee to. It is a small place. Please let me run to it. It's only a small place, isn't it? So that I can survive. Doesn't want to go up into the mountains, right? Still wants to live in a nice town, a nice house. And the angel said to him, all right, I'll grant your request about this matter too. And we'll not demolish the town you mentioned. Hurry up, run to it, for I cannot do anything until you are there. Uh, therefore, the name of the city is Zoar. The sun has had risen over the land when uh, Lot reached Zoar. Then out of the sky, the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah, burning sulfur from the Lord. He demolished those cities, the entire plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and whatever grew on the ground. But Lot's wife looked back and became a pillar of salt. They were explicitly told not to look back. Now, I don't know if this is mean like she was gazing back or or even maybe she tried to go back. But she was punished because she longed for the city, the things. When we are called out of our old life, this is a picture of us needing to, to move into our relationship with the Lord, not to look back on the wicked things that we've been rescued from, not to desire those things or to go after them anymore, but to say it is enough. So even though Lot and his daughters are rescued, his wife ends up not being rescued because she 
chose to identify with Sodom more than she chose to identify with God. Early in the morning, Abram, Abraham went to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah and all the land of the plain, and he saw that smoke was going up from the land like the smoke of a furnace. So it was when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham and brought Lot out of the middle of the upheaval when he demolished the cities where Lot had lived. So we see that God is willing to bring down his initial, if there's only 50 righteous, I will spare them, down to 10 because Abraham asks him to. And then God even spares the righteous, even when there are far less than 10. Um, maybe only one righteous, as we're going to see. His wife turned back and uh, was judged for it. So Lot is living in this little town. It's the only town on the plain that got spared. Everything else gets wiped out by fire. Um, Fire and brimstone, that's where we get the expression from, this passage, fire and brimstone. So Lot departed from Zoar and lived in the mountains along with his two daughters because he was afraid to live in Zoar. Yeah, he just saw God rain fire out of the sky upon the whole valley. A whole civilization, two major cities. because he was afraid to live in Zoar. Instead, he and his two daughters lived in a cave. Then the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man in the land to sleep with us, as is the custom of all the land. So the daughter seemed to be under the impression that all of humankind have been wiped out, or at least something along those lines. Um, and... Uh, Lot seems to be skittish about going towards any population or whatever. Does he go and seek out uh, Abraham? Nope. He just decides to hide in a cave. They say, our father is old and there's no man in the land to sleep with us as is the custom of the land. No one to get married to, right? Come, let us, let's get our father to drink wine so that we can sleep with him and preserve our father's line. So you see, they're saved out of Sodom, but there's still Sodom in them. So they got their father to drink wine that night, and the firstborn came and slept with her father. He did not know when she lay down or when she got up. The next day, the firstborn said to the younger, Look, I slept with my father last night. Let's get him to drink wine again tonight so that you can go sleep with him, and, he, and we can preserve our father's line. That night, they again got their father to drink wine, and the younger went and slept with him. He did not know when she lay down or when she got up. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The firstborn gave birth to a son named and named him Moab. He is the father of the Moabites of today. The younger also gave birth to a son, and she named him Ben-Ami. He is the father of the Ammonites today. Well, there is the twisted story. Righteous Lot, and yet um, he allowed himself to get drunk out of his mind. And um, it says that he didn't know what had happened, but after nine months, uh, or even before then, he probably had some idea of what had happened. And this whole situation started off with Lot pitching his tent towards Sodom. And then the next time we see him, he's in the city of Sodom. He has his, um, has his house inside the city. And he's trying to be a judge there. He's trying to be, and be a big name for himself. And apparently he's wealthy. As all the creature comforts. They apparently like it enough that his wife uh, 
even when she saw it burning down to the ground, wanted and longed to go back. And we see that even though Lot being righteous, and this is one of the things that we need to wrap our heads around, righteousness is comparative. Lot is not a righteous guy compared to some people, right? But compared to Sodom and Gomorrah, he was he was righteous. He believed God to an extent, and uh, he was credited as righteous. But being more righteous than a very, very wicked city is still not good. So, friends, we may be looking at ourselves as pretty good around people that we're around, but, friends, there's only one we can really compare our righteousness to, and that is God. Because God doesn't judge you based on, oh, well, you're more righteous than the people around you. He sees all of us as unrighteous. Lot fled to the hills because he realized that he was not that much more righteous than the people being swept away by the fire. Comparatively against God, he, he wasn't much better. And you and I, how dare we think of looking down on other people? Because we are unrighteous as well. God takes sin very, very seriously. We see that in this passage so very clearly. So what will we do about it? Will we purge the evil from within us? Will we seek by faith to walk with God? It's a hard passage. If you have some other takeaways, go ahead and pop them down in the comments down below. And uh, I will see you guys on Monday. Let me pray a prayer of blessing over you before you go. Lord God, we just pray that you would Bless each and every one watching this video today. Lord, that we would heed your warnings. That we would not long to go back. It's not enough to separate ourselves from the wickedness, but to, to bring it to an end in our own hearts as well. Lord, help us not to look down on people who are doing bad things around us as if we that makes us justified. But Lord, help us to measure ourselves against your true standard of your righteousness and help us to be made righteous by faith. Help us to walk this day in a way that is pleasing to you. That we pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Like I said, this is a weekday Bible study, so we won't be seeing you guys uh, for two days, um, but we'll pick up here on Monday. If you have some Bible studies that you, you want to check out, there's a couple listed on the screen right here. All right. See you on Monday. God bless you all.